All right, so I I'm wondering where the market is for Bryce Harper. Because, you know, most people during this season assumed he was going to join his really good friend Chris Bryant with the Cubs. And everything I've heard from people is the Cubs are maxed out. They have no money to spend. It would have to take a tremendous juggling act by um, Theo Epstein to make room for what would be about a $35 million contract. And what he would have to do is get rid of Jason Hayward, which was a terrible signing by them. Hayward has been nowhere close to the player they thought they were going to get. Who's taking Jason Hayward? And if you, if you try to trade Jason Hayward... You have to eat most of the money. So I don't know how they're going to clear that kind of kind of cap space because they are over the threshold. So most people say, well, he'll end up with the, the, the Cubs, so that doesn't look like it's going to happen. Or he'll go back to the Nationals. Well, the Nationals owner, Mark Lerner, was interviewed on 106.7 The Fan on Friday. And that's today. And he said, I really don't expect him to come back at this point. I think they've decided to move on. There's just too much money out there that he'd be leaving on the table. That's just not Mr. Boris's M.O. to leave money on the table. And it was reported earlier um, in the offseason that the Nationals made a 10-year, approximately $300 million offer to him. That was in September. And he said no. So Lerner said, when we met with them, we gave them the offer. We told them this is the best we can do. We went right to the finish line very quickly. And we said, if, if this is of interest to you, please come back to us, and we'll see whether we can finish it up. But we just couldn't afford to put more than that in and still be able to put a team together that had a chance to win the National League East or go farther than that. And I, I, I got to tell you, the 19-year-old kid they called up, it, it really lessens the blow. They still have a, a team that you could look at as the favorite mm -hmm. to win the National League East, even though the Braves won last year. And then with the signing of Corbin, I, I, let's say that Boris came back and said, I'll take the $300 million. I don't know if it's there anymore. Because you like spent $23 million on they, Corbin. Well, they, And they have over $520 million invested. In pitching. In three pitchers. Right. Right? Strasburg. Uh, Scherzer, Scherzer and Corbin. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, and and what wins? I mean, they've had they've had Harper, and they can't be disappointed in Harper. I mean, he has been a terrific player for them in the regular season. MVP came off a bad season, but still, you you you'd have to say they've been pretty happy with his performance offensively. Haven't won a thing. Yeah, it's amazing. So where where does he end up? And, and this is where I think they might have to make a decision. I think this would ha this would happen to Alex Rodriguez too. The team with the best offer was a terrible team, mm -hmm. Texas Rangers. But I think at that time, Boris was so intent on doubling the biggest contract of all time, which before Alex's contract was $126 million to Kevin Garnett. And that's exactly what they got. They got 252 Wow. So everybody's saying that the, the, the White Sox are in play. They have, they have no money on the books. They're ready to take the next step. They have an owner who's up there in years. They've never signed a contract this high. The highest contract they've ever signed was $68 million for Jose Abreu. But if they come up with the best offer, is that what you want? Or is it going to be the Phillies? Because there were some reports today that Harper really doesn't like Philadelphia. Sorry, Andrew, he doesn't like Philadelphia. So, do you... I, God I've, hates I've me. always said, if you have Scott Boris as your agent, and you know how I feel about Scott, I, he does the job the way... He, you would think that you, your client wants you to do it, you're going to go f for the highest dollar, even if you don't like the place. And I think that's sad. I think you should go where you want to go. I'm surprised he doesn't like Philly. Yeah, I am too. I mean, is Philly's it, is a pretty it, cool town. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a cool town. It's, it's a great ballpark to hit in. I mean, I think oh, he would do terrific there. He, he'd be familiar with all the pitchers because he wouldn't leave the division. And Philadelphia is, Michael, one of those towns that... Listen, he can he can pretty much live anywhere. He can live on the shore. He can live in the city. He can live in the suburbs. I mean, there's, you know, it's it, it's just odd that. Listen, we talk about the fans and how crazy they are, but just from geography, it, it's a it's a fine place. I'm I'm just really surprised that he would not like Philadelphia. But the, again, that's not out of his mouth. Yeah. That's that's some of what's coming out in reports. But I think it's going to be a frenzy to steal a word from Dave Rothenberg at the winter meeting starting on on. Uh, Monday, you're going to have Boris pitching his client, you, uh, but I don't think he'll sign in the winter meetings, but Machado might. So is it more beneficial to be the first one off the board? Because I think that Boris wants to see what Machado gets and then top it. 
Yeah, probably. I mean, it becomes that race of I want to sign for more than Machado did, and the right. guy that obviously signs first will set the market. And then the hope is that this guy that goes second, that the teams begin to get desperate and throw more money, but could it work the other way where they're like, ah, sorry, it's gotten out of control. I, Machado, that money's just way too much. I, I, can't, I can't afford that. So can it, can it burn him to wait? I don't know. But Boris is start, some of these plans are starting to backfire on him. He had how many clients that were not signed at the start of the season last year? I mean, go where you want to play. You're going to get paid. You're going to get paid well. But this whole, I got to be the highest paid player. I got to, I got to match this outlandish contract. When does it become just not worth it for teams? He's, the, the Nationals had him for a decade, didn't come close to winning. Didn't win a playoff series while he was there. All right? If I got to give the guy $300 million, am I going to make that back? In ticket sales and ratings? That's like the guy who called yesterday. The Yankees should just sign Harper and Machado. They could raise their ticket prices. Ratings for yes would go up. There's a ceiling to things. What is my investment? The point of no return, and I think that would be a point of no return, which the Phillies seem like they're willing to do. 